Okay, so I thought I'd try and tidy up my desktop a little bit. Uh, and one of the main problems I had was definitely the power adapter. And since this is a standing desk, uh, you definitely find that uh, cable management is not as easy and I could do a lot under the monitor but the first thing I tackled was definitely the power adapter so this is a, a three-way plug adapter and you can see that all three are switched and it's quite nice that they're coloured so I know which one I'm switching on and off without having to check the plug or anything like that um, but also I've got two USB sockets uh, with a switch for that as well so when I finish using my Pi I shut it down and then I can switch all these off and I know that nothing else is using power. So let's switch over to screen capture. So I did this video about a year ago now, which is my Raspberry Pi 4 running on, uh, well I did it with a, a trailing socket which was 2.4 amp, uh, and I also used to use a four-way adapter which was 2.4 amp as well, uh, but you're supposed to be using three amp, uh, and it's a 5.1 volt charger, and three amp is the official Raspberry Pi one, and this is the one that I would always recommend to get. So, uh, but I, I was interested to see if it worked on other ones and how well it worked. But what I've definitely noticed more recently uh, with both my Pi 4 and my Pi 400, they can handle a SSD drive and a physical drive at the same time, which I think in the past, I definitely used to get the physical drive. As soon as I plugged it in, it used to lock up. So I think power handling has got better on the Pi. Uh, I initially thought it was the Pi 400 because I did the test first on the Pi 400. Uh, and then I thought, oh, that's good, because the Pi 4 doesn't handle that. But now my Pi 4 does seem to do that on the official adapter. But I'm using currently uh, that four-way adapter that I just showed you at the start. So it's this one here, uh, and you can see that it's got the four sockets, and uh, importantly, the two USB sockets. They, they've got quite a lot less power than the uh, official Raspberry Pi adapter, only 2.1 amp. But this is what's powering my Pi at the moment my Pi 400, it's not overclocked, it's running at the standard clock speed and it's running from an SD card. Obviously the more things you plug in, uh, the more things are gonna take from it. So I really haven't got anything plugged in here apart from a little mouse dongle. Uh, and that's the only thing that's uh, taking any extra power. But if I go into NeoFetch, you'll see how long this has been up and running. And I had left it playing videos for more than an hour. Uh, so it's an hour and 27 minutes uh, it's been up and running before I started doing this video. So the Pi is is very efficient, is, doesn't take a lot of power, but if you are plugging in lots of other things, so on the Pi 400 you might want to plug in a USB sound card, well that's going to take more power from it. So then I would say your best bet is definitely to still go for the official Raspberry Pi adapter. I've got the black one, but it's the, it's the same power, the same setup and everything. But I do find it to be a very reliable adapter. Um, the other one I did in the test, uh, if I flick through it, let's just pause that so we don't get any audio. So this is another adapter I've been using, uh, and this was slightly higher power, so 2.4 amp coming from here. Uh, and uh, I use that quite a lot on my Pi for, di for various different things, certainly for gaming and things like that. It just meant I didn't have to unplug the official power adapter and I could use another Pi on my TV, uh, and that works very well. But if you are plugging extra things in, and just in general, you probably are better off to use the official Raspberry Pi adapter. I mainly bought this four-way adapter so that I can use one of the sockets for my capture device because that needs a USB power device uh, and it just means it's a lot tidier and I just wanted to have these extra sockets on the desk. So let's shut this down and switch over to the official Raspberry Pi power adapter. So I need to take out my SD card and if you saw some of my previous videos I'm using a piece of paper to hold that in place because I don't need the SD card for the next bit of this. Uh, I can unplug this one which is the USB that was coming from my four-way plug adapter. I'm going to plug back in the official Raspberry Pi USB-C adapter. So I've got that on this plug uh, so it's the blue switch to switch that on. So uh, I also need a few drives so I think what I'll do is plug in my M.2 drive because I think this takes a bit more power than an SSD drive. So, so that's plugged in and uh, I'll boot it up and then plug in the physical drive. Okay so now Ubuntu is loaded up let's plug in my physical drive and this is a 500 gig Toshiba drive which has got a load of uh, Damaso's ROMs on there for use with RetroPie, and I can hear that spin up, and I'm just gonna switch back into screen capture now. Okay, so all the sockets are taken up on my Pi 400 now, uh, so I've got my mouse plugged in, 
I've got my physical drive and I've also got my M.2 drive, which I think takes more power than the SSD drives. I have done this test with an SSD drive running the operating system to work fine, but just to show you, if I click on the 500 gig drive, uh, we can see that I've got RetroPie mount. Oh, this is the one I use for recall box. So the 750 one I use for RetroPie, uh, this is the one I use for recall box. And so if I go to ROMs, uh, you can see that I've got uh, a load of things in there. If I go to say PlayStation, one of my favorite of the old systems, takes a bit longer to load up than an SSD drive, but uh, you can see loads and loads of ROMs in there. So let's do the same thing with my Raspberry Pi 4, just to show that that also from the standard Raspberry Pi adapter can power a physical drive and an M.2 drive. Uh, you can also plug an SD card in and uh, you can write from uh, say this operating system to an SD card as well or image an SD card uh, all with this plugged in. It still works. Okay, so this is my 8 gig Pi in the cluster case. Uh, not using any extra active cooling, I'm just using the 52 Pi Ice Tower cooler and uh, so it's just passive cooling because I don't want to take extra power from the hard drives. I've got my Ethernet plugged in, I've got my mouse keyboard plugged in. So let's plug in the M.2 drive and boot from that and switch on the blue switch. I do like having these colored switches so I know which one I'm turning on and off. Okay, so that's booted up. So let's plug in the physical drive into the other spare USB 3 socket. I can hear that spin up and I can see that it's come up here, 500 gig drive and 500 gig. And let's try plugging in uh, another SSD drive just for fun. Uh, so let's see what happens if I plug that one in. Uh, so this will have to go into the USB 2 socket. What's happened in the past if I plugged in too much is the mouse had stopped working. Uh, well, that seems to be working. Yeah, that's read the drive. So there's the 32 gig drive. There's the 500 gig drive. Right, I think I'll switch into screen capture for this because you can see what's going on. So everything looks to be working all right. Uh, if we start up something like Gparted, this will show us all our disks. And I can hear the physical disk spinning. Right, so we've got the M.2 drive that it's running from, we've got the 500 gig physical drive, and we've got the SSD drive all plugged in. Everything seems to be accessible. Uh, so let's just have a look at files on them just to see that that's working as well. Uh, so it was in the recall box folder on it and ROMs. So if I go to something like N64, and you can see, yeah, all that is working nicely. Ubuntu's definitely got a lot better more recently with some of the updates. Uh, so, and now this is the, I don't even know what I've got on here. So I must have written an operating system to this, uh, but I don't know without looking. Oh, it looks like a, oh, it was a berry boot test, right? Okay, well, more about that in either yesterday's video or tomorrow's video, depending on which order I release these videos. Uh, so if I also was to plug in uh, an SD card, <laughs> crikey, uh, so I'm putting an SD card in the slot and see what happens there, because I guess that must still take a little bit of extra power. Yeah, it's found a boot partition. This is the SD card that I've got running Berry Boot. So if I go into Gparted, again, pop in my password. I can hear the physical disk as it's accessing that. Yeah, all shows up. Now this is impressive. Now, obviously depending on what you're doing and what you're writing and things like that, you might find it's not as stable. Uh, so you wouldn't normally plug this many drives. I can't think why you'd need to plug this many drives in at, at, at one time. But it's impressive that it does it and it doesn't crash because definitely before when I used to plug too many, I started to avoid plugging too many things in and I used to also write images uh, using an operating system with an SD card and they're using an SSD to write the image too because I found that using two drives was was less reliable but this does seem to be working very well so I guess I need to start using that more and playing around with it and uh, and see how it goes what was I going to do I was going to open up Firefox and just see that uh, everything isn't working normally so if I go to YouTube and let's just click on something here, just click on this one, just play a little tiny bit of that. 
Yeah, seems to be working absolutely fine. Okay, so I don't know at what point this improved. There was that big EEPROM update, and maybe they've done something with power management or how it deals with external drives, but yeah, this is impressive. Okay, so I hope this all helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.